All right. So, you know, the official title of this is Building Relationships to the Osmosis Values. Um, and like we always do, uh, well, actually, we're first starting with congratulating Abode for graduating. Um, are you on today? I would love to hear. Was this just yesterday, Abode, or was it earlier this week? I don't know if he's on, but uh, but congratulate him if you can. Some of you already sent me spread joy cards, I think. Um, but again, one of the coolest parts of working at Osmosis is seeing just earlier this week, we saw Antonia's graduation from medical school in Greece and her Hippocratic uh, ceremony, and then uh, Boat's uh, graduation in Rwanda. So super cool. Uh, so as we always start the vision, everyone who cares for someone will learn by osmosis and then our mission and values are here. And we're gonna go right into the, the values in a bit. So the reason we're doing this and we felt pretty strongly about starting it off with this particular topic is uh, for those of you who've read Creativity Inc. about the story of Pixar and high output management about the story of Intel, one of the uh, common learnings from both of these books is that it's super important for us to be able to train everyone who joins osmosis in specific um, ways and so uh you know at pixar i think it was called pixar academy at intel i don't know what it was called but um osmosis we aren't officially calling it osmosis academy but eventually we may have um something like that uh some of some of the teams already do this extremely well uh, i know Brittany and vince have done that uh Brittany, vince and tanner set it up for um the illustrator team and there's like a very set process for how to how to get onboarded as an illustrator um, and we'd like to start adding more kind of modules so that as we keep getting bigger and bigger we're able to align on how we uh, behave as a organization uh, just a quick note to just remember to mute yourself if you aren't uh, speaking uh, so there's a favorite richard branson quote that we have which is um, train people well enough so they can leave and treat them well enough so they don't want to. Obviously, I, I hope most of you, if not all of you, have experienced the, the latter, which is um, that we're going to keep establishing a really caring and joyful culture so that um, you're happy working at osmosis and, and uh, striving towards the same mission that we have. The, the first bit, I think a number of you have already taken advantage of. I mean, obviously the marketing team was in Chicago last week for a marketing conference and uh, had, had a professional development opportunity. We've done that for many, many people on the team. Vince was at Stanford presenting uh, about knowledge shots just a couple of weeks back. Um, but I, again, with the Osmosis Academy, we wanna emphasize the first bit, which is how do we train you well enough so that you have skills that you can take wherever you go? Hopefully you'll stay at Osmosis for the long haul. And, um, but, but even if you don't, uh, you know, we wanna equip you so that uh, you're, you're developing in your professional and personal lives so that wherever you go, you're gonna be successful. So as you all know, obviously the vision is everyone who cares for someone will learn by osmosis. And I've alluded to this, uh, alluded to this a couple times with many of you um, that sometimes I've been asked, like, so what, right? Like, what, what does the world look like when everyone who cares for someone learns by osmosis? And the so what is uh, the second bit, which I've, I've sort of added as an extension to the vision, and we haven't super formalized it yet, but this is how many of us, uh, what many of us believe we're doing. So basically by doing this, we're helping create a more caring world um, by developing the most caring people. And so to, to, to double click on that, the care we mean so far has been very literal, right? So um, many of you have produced videos on how to diagnose and treat heart failure or other conditions. That's literally providing care. Um, how to place an intravenous line. That's also literally providing care. But it goes beyond that to things like Care for Caregivers, which some of you have seen. It's our initiative to help our learners, um, who are all going to be future clinicians, avoid moral injury or burnout so that they have enough self-care through meditation and fitness and things we do internally to, um, to not burn out and still be capable of providing care. So um, truly, we are a very caring organization. And I think uh, we just have to remember that by developing the most caring people, we have to start with developing our own people. So everyone on this call, everyone who works at Osmosis, everyone who on LinkedIn says they're a member of Osmosis or affiliated with Osmosis in any way, we want to, to be one of these most caring people who are kind of sharing that, uh, whether they become a full-fledged clinician later on, or uh, again, whether they stay at Osmosis and move to a different organization, we, we want you to 
to, to have those relationship building skills. So the objectives of this presentation uh, for you, I right, kind of broke it down into two things. There's objectives for you as an individual, which is first and foremost. And then if, the, if that works, then objectives for us as an organization for osmosis. So for you as an individual, it's to help you develop even stronger relationships within and beyond osmosis. And again, I'm pretty good at developing relationships. I'm no expert and there's many different ways to develop relationships. So um, I'm just giving you my experience and what I've seen over the years of doing this. Uh, but the workshop will include what are, your, what are the ways you develop relationships so that we can learn from each other. And if you are able to develop these strong relationships um, collectively for osmosis, that means we can strengthen our collective skills so that we live and share our values through osmosis, which is by example. This matters a lot to us because um, there are a lot of different stakeholders we'll go through. And as I said, if, 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 you, know, if you randomly happen to run into a, a medical student or one of our investors in the street, um, this is kind of a shared language that you all can speak the fact that you have all kind of subscribed to our vision, mission, and values. And so um, every one of you is sort of an ambassador, uh, whether you want to be or not, but hopefully you want to be for what we're trying to do here at Osmosis. So there's a quote that I really like um, related to these objectives. Uh, your smile is your logo, your personality is your business card, and how you leave others feeling after having, ex having an experience with you is your trademark. And so for Osmosis, obviously what we do is our logo, um, but how we as an organization and us as individuals leave the people we interact with feeling after interacting with us is, is what we stand for. It's our trademark. So an open question for everyone, just chime in verbally. I don't see the chat. Um, who are the stakeholders uh, that I'm talking about here when we're talking about building relationships? So just name a couple that come to mind. OMS. OMS. The, which are our brand uh, medical student ambassadors um, at uh, Hillary and Vicky lead that team. Faculty. Faculty. Yep. Team members. Teammates. Thanks, Jeremy. Healthcare students. Yep. Our learners. Patients. Patients, for sure. Also, our learners and people who are indirectly and directly uh, affiliated with our our team, or our learners. Medical. Oh, sorry. Good. Oh, I was just going to say like medical governing bodies as well. That's good. Yeah. I actually didn't put that on the slide, but like uh, the American Board of Medical Specialties, which we work with, or NBME, AMA. Yep. And uh, potential users. Yep. People who, are, who don't yet know what osmosis is, the, the non customers, as we've called them in the past. Institutional leadership like the deans and the directors. Yep, administrators. Thank you, Marie. Competitors who are operating in, in good faith. Boom, competitors. Yeah, that's, that's some, some group I did put on there. So competitors uh -huh. are stakeholders. Go ahead. And I was going to say co-authors who, who are helping us disseminate the good work we do in scholarly ways. Totally. Thanks, Amin. Awesome. Yeah, you guys hit a lot of these on the head, so let me just uh, put what I put down. So teammates, that includes the current teammates on this call, people who weren't able to make the call. Future teammates, so Meredith and Hillary have done a really good job of, um, of, of kind of sharing our values with uh, people who want to be part of the team. Past teammates, right? So many teammates have, have gone on, like Sarah, for example, was an illustrator, and then she went to residency. We've still stayed in touch with her and uh, sent her some stuff. So past teammates who you may interact with or not in the future. Um, and then the extended families of those teammates, right? Not hopefully every one of you at this point has already experienced the fact that osmosis very much is not just your relationship to osmosis. It's our, our relationship to the people in your lives that you care most about. And that's often how we've also built, uh, had more teammates join us. For example, um, I got to know Caitlin or Kat, who is Tanner's uh, fiance. And uh, now she's a voice, she's been a voice of artist now for some years and scriptwriter. Um, so there's a lot of the, lot, tons of tons of these examples. Consultants. So there are people who aren't necessarily on these calls. They aren't invited to the Monday and Friday calls, but they are, you know, working with us. For example, Irving is a SEO expert, and we've tried to treat him as a member of the team as well. Um, and he he clearly has been super active and helpful with the SEO and SEM work. Learners. So you guys mentioned that OMFs. Uh, anyone on intercom. So this this workshop 
you know, truly is for everyone on the team. Obviously, the, the people who interact most with our learners are people like Jeffrey, Maria, Caleb, Katie, um, and then obviously anyone in sales and marketing um, and customer success, but really anyone, because there's many opportunities where people will, uh, you may, again, be traveling and meet a med student or meet a nursing student and they have heard about osmosis. So any one of you could be interacting with these learners. Uh, faculty members, um, which Marie mentioned and Catherine mentioned, uh, administrators, similarly, uh, partners. So all the things that Diffusion Studios is doing, Kelly, Pauline, um, you, know, you are interacting with partners all the time. Uh, but then, you, you know, a lot of, a lot of other people have interacted with partners um, that aren't just, you know, current clients, but potential partners like the AMA or ABMS that, um, that Cushion mentioned. Investors and advisors. So that didn't come up, but that's obviously a major stakeholder that we care about. Many of you have developed really good relationships with our investors and advisors, often, you know, meeting up with them outside of um, interactions that I've had with them. Uh, which I, I encourage because these are all really cool people. We can all learn a lot from them. And, um, you know, one of the reasons um, we have a great investor in, in Peter Frischoff, who is the guy who started Medscape, is the connection we have with Amin um, on the team. And so Amin was not a teammate at that point. He was a uh, part of why I'm showing this is, is how fluid these roles are. So Amin was a fa is a faculty member. Who, be, who was an administrator at uh, UCSF, UC Berkeley's joint medical program. And that's how I got to know him through the Wikipedia work and the work he was doing there. And then he in, introduced us to an investor, uh, Peter, who uh, wound up becoming a, an anchor investor of ours. And now Amin is a teammate. So it's super fluid how people kind of move in and out of these um, roles. Vendors, so that, that didn't come up, but all of us in our day to day are interacting with different vendors. So whether it's the person you send a support message to at frame.io, uh, our accountants, our lawyers, um, the AWS or Amazon Web Services representative, which will come up a little later, anyone you interact with uh, in that capacity is a, you know, someone who's helping us achieve our mission and vision. So I want to make sure you're thinking about vendors. Uh, as Owen mentioned, competitors. So uh, We've had many, many interactions with competitors, uh, and most of them have been good. There have obviously been times where, like, you know, we, we view the fact that what we're doing is fantastic. Uh, we all believe that. But we have to remind ourselves that even competitors, even the most stubborn competitors who may not be operating in good faith, are still trying to improve health education, right? We're all sort of doing this. It isn't like we're both, you know, two companies are trying to drill oil in the Arctic basin. Like, this isn't a zero sum game. And we are collectively doing good for the world. So um, treat it, we treat competitors as uh, potential relationships. Uh, Kyle and Owen have led a lot of the work with teaming up with competitors to um, help battle piracy. So just earlier this week, we were emailing with Boards and Beyond, Dr. Jason Ryan there. And uh, another example of a competitor is uh, Khan Academy. So I'll, I'll, I'll pop up an email that Rishi and I had from 2013 when we had first met at TED Med. Where back then, I think Rishi and I viewed each other as competitors, but we kept a really good relationship and we developed a good relationship and, um, and then you know, the rest has been history a bit. So basically with all these stakeholders, really anyone you interact with, you're always building relationships. You know, everything should be viewed in the, in the, in the framework as building a relationship. Um, and we'll talk about how you can remind yourself of that so that even the most transactional of types of relationships, like the one that I had yesterday when I went through the McDonald's drive through when I paid somebody two, you know, a dollar for a soda, they gave me the soda. It's still a relationship because I, you know, you want to spread joy to that person. You want to say, thanks, have a good day, have a good weekend. Um, so not instrumentalizing people, but remembering that every one of these is actually a person that you could build a relationship with. So here's the example of the email. Uh, so I, I peppered throughout this, I have different emails just to give you examples of relationship building along the way. So 2013, April 2013, uh, Ryan and I had just taken a month, the, our first month off of med school. Uh, our parents at that point um, were pretty freaked out, uh, but we were, we were in it. And we went to TED Med and we're doing something called the smartphone physical, which I did a knowledge shot about a couple months ago. And right after I met Rishi, I sent him a message. It was great meeting you. At Ted Med, um, I've had an awesome experience and enjoyed your smartphone physical. Continue the conversation. Let's talk about making a high quality question bank. Uh, six years before Maddie joined us and, and Avi got in them. Um, 
and finally is much higher quality now with them on the team. So uh, Rishi responded, we kept in touch and we were on different panels together and fast forward three or two years after that, a competitor became part of our team, one of our close, one of my closest friends. And um, that's where we, you know, without Rishi, I wouldn't know Kyle and Tanner and then you wouldn't know Vince and there's so many other people. It's sort of how ama amazing how this one email kind of started off, uh, you know, this, this kind of life changing experience. And that's one of the main takeaways is any one of these individuals that you interact with, even the person serving you soda at McDonald's could eventually be, a, a, you know, kind of a transformative relationship that you've built. So why should you build strong relationships? Let me open that up for question, uh, your feedback as well. We said, who are the stakeholders are, but why, why do you care about building relationships with them? And feel free to verbally talk. Jake said, the real relationships we build are the friends we make along the way. Well said, that sounds like it should be on the, my coaster, but my coaster actually says, be the change you want to see in the world. But thank you, Jake. Other reasons. Sometimes if we know who we're working with personally, it makes us more motivated to give them something good. That's great. That's a really good point, Marissa. Um, on, on, on the flip side of that, um, by building these relationships uh, and kind of establishing uh, a baseline with, with folks, um, it means that when there are times that you have to have difficult conversations, uh, it is kind of built on the trust that is already there in the relationship rather than it being something um, much more difficult to do. Exactly. If people don't view it as transactional, if they know that you're coming from a good place, even if the outcome is not what either of you want, they, um, it still makes it uh, better. Uh, the process is better because they trust you. Marie, you were saying something? I, use, I frequently say everybody you touch when you're representing someone is a potential patient. Um, a mo potential patient with anybody I'm talking to, and everybody is a potential patient. So whatever we do to improve healthcare and those that provide it, making a direct impact, kind of selfishly on myself someday. Definitely, and that I actually have a screenshot of an email I sent somebody just yesterday, who became a new father. And the nice thing about osmosis is that we have so much great content that there were like two videos immediately I was able to send him, one on developmental milestones, for example. So there's always a way that you can connect with somebody yeah. on their health, given our work at Osmosis. One more uh, reason to build strong relationships? Since I'm one of the older members of the team, I would actually just offer now, as I reflect back in all these years in med ed, we all grow older and so we can learn from people who are further along the life stage course trajectory, which then sort of plays to help us grow individually in our own lives. And so like you end up being healthier by having healthier relationships over your life course. It's a great, thanks Amin, that's a great uh, transition to why what I had written. So. Um, so it's not because I ask you to build relationships, right? So that's, that's not the reason. It's what I mean was just saying, it makes you healthier and happier, the stronger relationships you have in your life. It also makes others healthier and happier because you can't have a relationship without, one person can't make a relationship. It's bi-directional or, or multi-directional. So if you're developing stronger relationships, making you healthier and happier, you're making the other people healthier and happier. And then that becomes a virtuous cycle. Right. And so um, one reason, you know, one of the reasons Atomic Habits is one of our favorite books and again, consult Robin's book report and balance books for a great summary for it is that it made the point very clear that uh, the behaviors you adopt, um, the beha like if you really want to change a habit and develop a habit, you should join a community with that habit. And so if you want to be more caring, uh, I hope osmosis is a place where we can help you flex that muscle and become more caring because everyone around you is caring. Um, and so, you know, I would like to think that even if the Grinch were to join osmosis, uh, you know, we'd be able to, to, you know, get their heart to be bigger. So atomic habits, we want to surround ourselves with people who have relationship building skills too. And that's part of why I'm training, trying to do some training for people who may not be as naturally interested in, um, in developing these relationships. If I can get you to move, you know, Delta by 5% or what, whatnot, um, it just makes the organization stronger and becomes virtuous. And then uh, a side effect of these relationships is that they often lead to karma and opportunities, right? Even if it feels like a unidirectional relationship, you're giving more than you're getting, 
um, you know, sometimes you have to remind yourself that um, that's fine because ultimately it's what you do. It's not the fruits of that labor. So um, it leads to opportunities like the one I just mentioned where Rishi and Khan Academy of Medicine joined Osmosis uh, after building that relationship um, for two, three years. And this relates to one of our favorite quotes is, thousands of candles can be uh, lighted from a single candle and the life of the candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. Um, and so that's obviously, you know, it's, it's something that you've probably already seen, but I think with relationships and building strong relationships, this is truly something that um, we experience. The other piece, so um, there was a, a famous study, it's 80 year old study, um, uh, said that <clears throat> basically embracing community helps you live longer and be happier. Um, the title was good genes are nice, but joy is better. Uh, and so the surprising finding is that our relationships and how happy we are in our relationships has a powerful influence on our health. Taking care of your body is important, but tending to your relationships is a form of self-care too. That I think is the revelation. And close relationships more than money or fame are what keep people happy throughout their lives, the study revealed. Those ties protect people from life's discontents, help to delay mental and physical decline, and are better predictors of long and happy lives in social class, IQ, or even beauties. So again, echoing what um, our resident psychiatrist, uh, Amin, knows. Um, so now the last question. So we said, who should you build relationships with? Why should you build strong relationships? Now, how can you build strong relationships? Uh, I'm going to take three responses for that, and then we'll move into... Uh, into the values of it. Well, I'll jump in real fast. I think that one of the hardest things uh, to do, especially in this day and age, is to, um, it takes a lot of courage, I think, sometimes to say hello to someone you don't know. So when there is an intro, an email intro, something like that, that's a different story. But like yesterday, for example, I was sitting in a cafe and there were six people at the booth, all of which were on their cell phones. I know we've all been in this situation kind of perusing Facebook or social media or whatever. Um, it's really hard in that situation when the social norm is to not speak, to just say hello to a stranger. And having the courage to do that, I think that, that increasingly that is becoming the abnormal thing is to say hello. Uh, and the normal thing is to stay quiet and not say anything at all. And so I think just showing up is 99% of it. And I think people remember that. They're like, wow, you know, um, I was sitting there, Owen bothered to say hello, Marissa bothered to say hello, that was pretty cool. So I think um, just showing up is, is 99% of it. Really good point. Thanks, Rishi. I would say um, assume good intentions from the people who you interact with in your life. Uh, it's easy to uh, misinterpret um, or to feel slighted if you're looking at the world through that lens. Uh, but if you look through it in terms of um, compassion and good intent uh, from others, um, then you can uh, generally inspire trust and uh, feel trusted as well. Thanks, Jeremy. There's a great quote that says, we judge ourselves by our intentions and we judge others by their actions. And that often leads to what uh, Daniel Kahneman calls faulty attribution error, where you know, when someone cuts us off in traffic, um, we think they're the worst person in the world, um, not realizing that maybe their intentions are, you know, if I'm late again for my work, I may get fired or whatever it is. Um, but then if we cut somebody off, we know why we did that. So that's a really good point. Um, try to try to get I would, I would also say, yeah, um, find Kush and then Owen. Oh, yeah, sure. So, um, sorry, I was just gonna, I was just gonna add that, um, another way to build really strong relationships would be to kind of be a broker and go out of your way to be a broker. Um, so if you meet someone new and you know, someone else that might, um, they might be able to like really, might really hit it off or, you know, they might be able to help each other out in some way or way, shape or form than just like to take that extra step and make that introduction because you never know kind of how that will come back and help you in the future and kind of help those people as well. Totally. Always think how you can add value to somebody, which we'll get into. Oh, and do you want to close it out with one more? Yeah. I mean, I, I think just kind of building off of that, it's, it's about kind of finding ways to help and, um, uh, you know, as, as your part, part of finding ways to help can also just be listening and getting an understanding of kind of how they're approaching things or thinking about things or what is going on in their lives. And so just even taking that extra moment to kind of ask somebody how they're doing and being able to follow up on that is incredibly important. Totally. 
Yep. Okay, great. We'll, we'll get into that. So you've all touched upon different things that are essentially the answer is our values, right? The answer for a lot of things are our values and this one is no exception. So I want to frame kind of how you can go about building stronger relationships with very specific examples from each of our six values. Um, so that's where the next six slides are. Just to give you uh, very recent, like within the last few months, examples of how I personally have worked to build stronger relationships through our values. Um, and hopefully it'll give you ideas for things you could be doing that may not uh, have otherwise occurred. But then in the brainstorming, you can come up with things that you've done that, that I can learn from and others can learn from. So, so one core note before we go into those is that just like anything, like actual physical working out, meditation, really a lot of different skills, violin, it needs to be practiced. It's a, you know, it's something that may, may or may not come naturally to you. Not all six necessarily, um, you know, making eye contact when everyone's on their smartphone, um, as Rishi was saying, it's not a natural thing. And so, you know, you have to practice things, giving people the benefit of the doubt. Um, when I, whenever I've done that, I'm much happier. I feel better at the relationships are stronger. I don't do that all the time. Even this week, I didn't do that. And so I think it's important to just remember that this is a, uh, something that needs to be practiced and developed over time and hopefully again by surrounding ourselves with people who are practicing this skill um, We become more powerful together So the first one and this is obviously the most important one in terms of relationship building for sure is starting with the heart It's genuinely caring about somebody Relationships that are built on just transactions just do not work right like even when we sell a b2b partner for osmosis that's a relationship we're building and we're, we're saying we're going to be able to help you, your students and your faculty succeed and thrive. Uh, we, aren't, we aren't in this for like a short term, like, you know, give us some money, we'll give you some access, see you later. It's definitely not a transaction. It's a lifelong kind of relationship um, that can develop. And uh, Marie is a good example of that, where she's, she's known people throughout her career who she's interacted with again and again from different companies, from HealthStream to Beeline to Osmosis now. And having those strong relationships are, what, what gets, gets them to answer the phone or answer her email when she, when she contacts them. But how do you express genuine care? How do you show authenticity? Um, hope, you know, the best way is to actually be authentic, to actually be genuine, right? Because then you don't have to fake it. But uh, in the process of building that authenticity, again, it's a skill, it's a practice, because you may not all the time actually care about that person giving you your soda at McDonald's, right? You may not actually care. You, you may be distracted with something else. Forgive yourself on those times that you do um, kind of view things as transactional, but practice trying to be genuine here. And so the, the number one thing I do is whenever I interact with a person, whenever I'm on an email with somebody or I meet them in a, at a conference, um, the first question that always comes to mind is what is one thing I can do to make this person's life better? And part of that will be informed by the second question is, is there something in common that we share? Because if we can find some commonality, whether it was the school we went to or the fact that we both love snowboarding, which Owen and Hillary and Rishi and Ryan, forgive me, but you guys know I use that all the time in building relationships because it works and I'm passionate about it. Um, we, we find a way to connect and then that lets them open up so that I can think about how to make that person's life better. And so it, it echoes what John F. Kennedy said, which is ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. In this case, ask not what can this person do for you, ask what you can do for that person. It's just a really effective kind of mind shift change so that you can um, you know, practice what's called servant leadership. And, and then, you know, again, five times out of 10 or 10 times out of 10, depending on when you do this, you, nothing comes back to you. But in the long game with a lot of large numbers and interactions, believe me, things come back when you start having this uh, kind of giving mentality. So the way to ask this question is first, just to be, someone who's truly listening to them. Too many of our conversations are, you know, you're thinking about what you want to say when somebody's talking to you. You aren't actually listening to what they're saying. Um, you know, you're thinking too much about kind of what you're going to say next. You don't even remember their name or the fact that they said, oh, here's an example. I was busy at a conference. Somebody had emailed me saying, oh, sorry, I didn't email you back. My son was sick. And I sent her back an email being like, oh, it's fine. Let's schedule something else uh, next week. And then I was like, I'm, at a I'm just busy. I'm at a conference. And I sent back a, a reply immediately and said, sorry to hear your son's sick. Um, no rush, like whenever you need it, right? So just trying to remember that you can correct times when you maybe view things or do things too transactionally. Just really listen to them. And it helps when you do some research because there's 
the reason I like emphasize LinkedIn so much and developers really don't like me for it, specifically one or two developers, Ryan and Sam, is, um, is that LinkedIn is a great tool for background research. That's not creepy, right? So if you're Facebooking people and like, you're like, hey, how was Cabo? Um, that's a creepy thing to do. But if you LinkedIn them and you're like, oh, we, we actually went, uh, both went to uh, college in Colorado. You can connect on that. And again, whenever you can find a shared thing to connect on, you can find anything shared to connect on with somebody, right? If you have five fingers, they have five fingers, you connect on that, right? You can always find somebody to connect with them on and then that opens them up to talk and then when they're talking, you listen. And then, um, whoops, when you do speak, when you do take the time to speak, uh, you actually recognize them, right? You echo back what you've heard. Um, you, you take, I mean, so, like hopefully you, you, know, you can develop a good memory where like you pick out these details, but even if you can't, you write notes down, you, you pick one thing that you remember and you echo that back, you ask them about themselves. So if they say that their son was sick, ask them, how was your son, right? Like, you know, go, go down into letting them talk more about themselves and then recognize them for having said what they said. People, you know, another quote I like is, God gave us two ears and one mouth so we can listen twice as much as we speak. Um, some of you have probably heard that too. This applies here in, in any building of relationships. People like to speak, and as long as you're patient and authentically listening to them, you'll pick up a lot of things that'll show you how common, how many shared things you have in common, and that'll come back to build that relationship. So that's number one and most important is genuinely caring about the person and practicing that muscle. Um, next time you again go to the drive through think about that and not you know don't don't know the 10 cars behind you during lunchtime rush hour by having a conversation with the drive through person but but really you know see what you know try, try doing your best to make things not transactional essentially okay <clears throat> a second one is spread joy obviously so in terms of lighting candles one of the biggest hacks like hacks i call it even though that kind of instrumentalizes this practice is a lot of you do keep daily gratitude. And if you're in balanced mindfulness, you have the howdy that asks you, what are you grateful for? And you know, a lot of times we, I say I'm grateful for my candles, I'm grateful for the snow-capped mountains, those kind of things. But whenever you think about a person that you're grateful for, right? Um, your teacher in high school who got you interested in science, um, your mom, your dad, whatever it is, uh, whoever it is, you know, instead of just writing it in a journal or in howdy, take that extra step and use spread joy or just send them a text or an email to light their candle that day, right? It's like one of the best ways to kind of stack habits is what Atomic Habits called it, where one habit is gratitude. And again, instead of keeping that gratitude in and out, like in yourself, you can spread joy by taking that gratitude and making it known to that person or to the world through the public appreciations who will come through. And so examples of ways you get ideas for who to spread joy to, are, you know, I still get the daily Facebook email saying, these are the people who have birthdays. And I don't send spread joy cards to all of, all of them because it's, I, have, I don't even know who Michael is anymore. Um, and I don't want to be weird and be like, Michael, happy birthday. Um, but there have been times where like, a, a lot of times where I'll send a, a note to somebody I went to college with, I haven't really talked to them in two years, but I'm like, how are they doing? Send them a spread joy card, it leads to a great conversation. Um, same thing on LinkedIn. LinkedIn does the same thing. Wish people happy birthday. Congratulate people for starting or uh, celebrating milestones in their jobs. Zach today listed Osmosis as a place he started working at. Uh, so happy first day at work, Zach. Um, and then you can start sending uh, messages to people uh, with regards to that. Just today I sent uh, one of our investors, Dasha, a thank you for or, um, a great meeting we had earlier this week, which, um, which helped me make a decision So uh, regarding getting a coach. Okay, so that's spreading joy, basically habit stacking and being able to take your, uh, your, your gratitude that you have for people and like sending it out to the world so that you're actually lighting candles and not just your own. Uh, third value, have each other's backs. So public appreciation. Um, so this is taking what we just talked about with spreading joy and making it known more. Um, and I'll share how, that, how that's done. So some of you may remember on September 26, the site went down for a little bit uh, and it was quite stressful because uh, this was one of those black swan events where you, you know it shouldn't happen but it happened and normally Ryan gets on it and we fix it within a few minutes but uh, Ryan was flying from France to Charleston um, and so we could we just couldn't get a hold of him and so Sam and we were on the phone with um, 
uh, with Amazon Web Services and how we're going through like the normal channels and not hearing back as well. And so Sam, this is, I kind of uh, photo documented it. Um, so Sam was frustrated. Um, this, these were charts basically showing how, how slow our um, site was responding. And then uh, Sam took his hat off. It was clearly a devolving situation. Uh, and then this was the last one where it just was not getting better after a good, you know, few minutes of conversation. And so we, I called a woman named Pranusha who I saw was our AWS rep. Um, and you know, she's, she manages like probably 30 clients, but we called her we said, look, we just have this big issue. Can you help us? She got Amazon to you know, give us priority customer support. And as a result of her stepping in to do that, we sent her, sent her a greeting card. Um, which he really appreciated. He said, thanks for providing the greeting card. Um, please, you know, you can use the link in my signature, which is directly sent to my leadership team and it will be very useful for my career growth. Thank you again. So we did it and we wrote a review for her about how helpful she was. Um, and obviously she, she very much appreciated that because ultimately, you know, you could say one could do that for priority support in the future. But frankly, if you just give it, like Pranusha could eventually be a teammate, right? When she leaves Amazon, if she leaves Amazon, she could be maybe our DevOps person. And it's just a bet, it's, it's understanding that like, asking that first question of how can I make this person's life better? So let me take the extra couple minutes to recognize them. And another example of that is some of you know Regina, uh, Meredith and Hillary work with Regina. Regina has interviewed some of you, has done reference checks on many of you. Um, She's a wonderful woman, and um, Hillary wrote her LinkedIn recommendation. Because again, Hillary and I are very appreciative of, of Regina, and then Hillary took the extra step to take that appreciation, have her back, and express that publicly. So Q, Q4 this quarter, we're doing Osmosis Appreciates You, which is more individually within the team. Q1, and whenever we do teammate spotlights, it's good to have each other's backs. I just This is one example of showing appreciation. There's a lot, many, many other ways to build relationships by having each other's backs. Clearly, your day-to-day -day work when um, you know, a voice of artist steps in um, so we can reach our 20K goal uh, or um, uh, we need to update a, uh, update a video um, or a partner is like, hey, let's send me a chest x-ray video like ASAP. Um, we're having their backs and building that relationship by being reliable as long as, again, it makes sense and we aren't deprecating our own self-care as a result. Okay, um, open your arms. So the, you can't build a relationship unless you know the person. And that's why we do the one-on-ones and that's why we do roses and thorns. And on Monday, I'm like a broken record. Who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? And we're gonna keep doing that even when we're you know, 500 people, if we're 500 people, right? Um, hopefully those, those calls will be a little more manageable then. Um, but we, we need to put this in the onboarding checklist, I think, but essentially on LinkedIn, and again, LinkedIn is not the end all be all of relationship building. It's just the place where a lot of people, like a lot more, they're, they're just the winners in terms of having the most data on people, professional data on people that, that we can use to build those relationships. But when you click on the see all employees on LinkedIn, um, you'll see everyone. You'll see people who are teammates, past, present, future. You'll see advisors, investors, and feel free to go down the list. I'm already connected with everyone here, but uh, obviously, except Emma, who's not, not uh, approved me yet, but I'll have to DM her about that. Um, but you can just go down the list and connect with people. And in the process, when someone else is a um, video illustrator, you know, if Kai doesn't know Meg, click on Meg's profile and it's like, oh, wow, Meg is a, also a graphic artist and um, also loves Harry Potter, if that's on LinkedIn for some reason. Um, so there's ways you can connect with people without having to talk to them for 30 minutes at a time. So you start getting this, this knowledge of your coworkers. Um, and then obviously what you all did on, what we do a good job off on homies and welcoming teammates. Um, a next level tip is to actually DM that teammate, right? So um, I do 30 minute, at least 30 minute one-on-ones with every new teammate who joins. That's unscalable, like I wouldn't recommend that for everyone. But uh, if you hear something that's interesting to, uh, like somebody when they introduce themselves says something interesting, Lisa's in New York. Oh, I'm going to New York for Thanksgiving. Um, if you're around, we'd love to meet up. Those are the kind of relationships uh, that you guys can build. I think Jack, Lisa, Kush are all in New York with Aviad. I'm sure you guys will meet up at some point. So starting to think about how you can connect with your teammates um, and welcome new relationships. The same goes for vendors. And whenever I'm introduced to a new vendor or a new potential investor, um, 
you know, think about that person as, as a relationship. And I always will often LinkedIn them. And more often than not, I'll see that we have something in common, either a person in common or a background in common. And that, that just makes it, it's, it's more fun, right? Like it shows you how small the world is. And, you know, like you are truly less than six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon um, when, you, when you actually see this stuff. Okay, uh, imagine more. So being creative with how you do the outreach. Osmosis wants to differentiate and be super innovative, right? Not just for the sake of innovation, but when it, when it leads to interest, you know, leads to making people more joyful, starting with the heart, when it, when it aligns with our values. And so an example is we had a finalist candidate for one of our roles. And even though we didn't accept him um, after going through a whole you know, big vetting process, um, we sent him some swag. And he said, hey guys, just want to say thanks for the nice note and the cool coffee mug. My wife was a little confused as to why a company who didn't hire me was being so nice. The only answer I had is because they treat people like humans. Sadly, that's a rare commodity these days. So thanks for setting an excellent example and inspiring me to step up my game a little bit too. Uh, I remain very impressed with how you've organized a remote company and might call on you someday for some insight as to how you do so well. All the best. This is not uncommon. We've gotten a couple, uh, couple uh, inbounds like this from people who we haven't hired or, or vendors or partners. You saw the one with Pernusha. Um, and it's not super scalable for like me to do it with everyone or Hillary to do it with everyone or Owen, um, which is again why we're doing this relationship training because many of you interact daily with vendors and with potential candidates. Um, just earlier this week, we said no to a UI, uh, UX design candidate and Heidi went above and beyond and sent them constructive feedback as to how they can improve their um, skill set so that in the future they could apply to Osmosis or another company. Um, so that's how we want to be thinking creatively about how we build those relationships by doing things that other companies, other organizations don't do because they don't necessarily treat people like humans like we try to do. Um, another example, this is the one I referenced earlier, just from yesterday. Marie, uh, Marie said, you know, everyone is uh, a patient and that's true. Everyone here has a body and uh, whether it's, uh, hopefully it's functioning normally, but if it isn't, um, you know, there's still a video for you. And so, Osmosis with 1,300 videos has something for literally everyone. Um, and so this person who I'm trying to build a very strong relationship with and it's working, um, basically said that you know, last month I listened. He said last month I just had my first boy, first baby. And you listen to that and then say, oh, here's a video on, um, send them two videos, breastfeeding and developmental milestones. We had a, more of a conversation about that. So it wasn't just, you know, awkward. But, um, you know, Whenever you're talking to a family member, a friend, a vendor, again, any one of those stakeholders, and you listen and you hear about you know, something they're interested in, oh, I may go keto or whatever it is, there's something from osmosis that you could send them and be creative with your outreach. So I just want you guys thinking creative, creatively about all that stuff. And then finally, reach further. How do you stand out? So are there ways that you can leave an impression on somebody? Because one thing that's true about society today is there's just so much noise. There's just way too much noise in the world and it's impossible to stand out, which is why I think this return to being human, to sending in real life swag and postcards, to, um, to listening to people and connecting with them and making eye contact and, um, and saying hi when you see them on the subway, even though everyone's on their phone. That's such a rare commodity and so such a way for you to stand out. Um, and so an example of how I do it, this is, a, this is a, another one of those hacks, but it's a great way to build relationships. I've done this several times and it's worked 100% of the time, is um, I'm often given book recommendations by friends or investors or advisors. And uh, depending on kind of where I am in my, my own life, if I have some bandwidth, I will often read that book within the week of them recommending it to me, write a summary and send it to them and thank them for it if it was a valuable book. And so this happened, this has again happened a couple of times, but um, with our investors, Felicis Ventures, who led our A, Series A round in, uh, in May, uh, back when they were courting us, they gave me a book called Learning to Lead, which had stories of, you know, the guy who started Fitbit and Shopify and all these other great companies. And um, they gave, gave me the book, I remember because Hillary and I were in SF, we met with them. Um, I was going to Breck to hang out with um, Vince and Tanner and Heidi and Brittany. Uh, and on that plane ride, I, I just read the book. Um, and, you know, obviously, I've, you know, I 
I wasn't doing other things. I was just reading basically for a couple hours straight. And um, that night uh, at 8.29 p.m., I think they gave me the book at like 2 p.m. 8.29 p.m., I had finished reading the book. It was a pretty short book. Um, and then I submitted a book report, screenshotted it, and thanked them for giving me the book. The, the reaction that you can engender when you reach further like that is, who does that? No one does that, right? And so because no one does that, you stand out and that like makes the relationship stronger. You can't do this, it doesn't scale. You can't do this with everyone and every book recommendation, but think about how you can reach further and do something that nobody else does that's positive and, and impactful. And so um, they responded very positively to that uh, within the next two hours. Um, it was wonderful to meet you and thank you so much for sharing this with us. It means the world to us that you found it valuable. I also love getting that small glimpse into the learning culture of osmosis. Uh, another one, uh, echoing Dasha's kind note back and positive sentiments. I've never seen a founder process things, execute and iterate as fast as you do in my 13 years of doing venture. And again, this is not, oh, the culture you're building on us, which is very unique and special. This is not to pat myself on the back. The reason I'm sharing this is that every one of you is capable of doing something like this. We're all really smart. And I think it's just a matter of thinking outside the box, being creative and reaching further when you build those relationships. So think about who you may want to impress, who you may want to build a relationship with, and, and this had a meaningful impact on our Series A, right? Because they clearly believed in, in me and the, and the team, what we've all collectively accomplished. And if you can do this kind of stuff, you really do stand out in a way that leaves a mark. All right, so I'm sorry it took 50 minutes for me to get through the slides. There was just a lot there, and I took more initial responses up front. So I think rather than us coming back together, I'm gonna to share, share the summary slide, and then we'll do the breakout room so you can do the quick intros and then go through the the three questions. And if there's not enough time to get cut off, you have to join something else. Um, just make sure you write the responses in the spreadsheet that we sent out. So um, the summary really is, again, for you, the purpose of this training was to help you develop even stronger relationships within and beyond osmosis. And for osmosis, it's that if you can do that for yourself, that strengthens our collective relationship building skills so that we can collectively live and share our values through osmosis. And in that process, create a more caring world by developing the most caring people. So with that, I, I do want to take one or two questions or thoughts, and then maybe Hillary, you can do, um, how many people are on? 57 people. You can do um, 12, 12 breakout rooms and people can kind of share what they've learned or their, their favorite tactics for building relationships. So any one or two questions before we do the breakout rooms and go to, go to the weekends? I have a question around prioritization. So, you know, I, I think one of the things that you, you mentioned was, you know, obviously a lot of this stuff isn't necessarily scalable for one person um, to kind of do with every single person that you meet. How do you, how do you think about it and, and prioritize these things um, as the number of in people that we all interact with grows over time? It's a great question. So one thing I'll point out is you don't have to have like there's something called the Dunbar number, which is basically what the estimate is of how many meaningful relationships humans, given our neocortical volume, can have. And it's about 150 is what they say, based on other primates and the, how big of societal circles they live in, humans are about 150 people. Um, I'm not saying, like I have 8,000 LinkedIn connections. I don't know, there are a lot of names I don't even know. So I'm not saying you need to build relationships and keep strong relationships with 8,000 people. Frankly, I think you could have a very happy life just having one or two incredibly meaningful relationships into your, into your, your, your prime years. Um, so the muscle I'm trying to develop here, and the reason I even prioritize this relationship building is I, I'm at the point where I can't be messaging Pranusha at AWS. I want Sam and Ryan to do that, right? So that's why I'm doing this training is like, you all can kind of, you know, hopefully if you haven't been doing this, take away one or two things and then when it occurs to you, start doing it in the interactions you're having with people. Um, and it'll make us as an organization stand out beyond just one or two people on the team doing this all the time. So this training is how we scale it and, and add leverage. Um, but again, like I think there's two parts. It's you need to prioritize the closest relationships in your life. It's why we have work-life balance. So that's first and foremost. And hopefully you have a lot of these kind of things may not help. They may or may not help with that. But if you can also develop the muscle for in immediately connecting with people and building these relationships that are previously more transactional but now become more meaningful, it'll also make the quality of your day to day much better because it, things will come back to you. They'll be like, oh wow, like you know, you you lit their candle, and then when your candle is diminishing, they'll come back and light your candle. So, good question. 
one more question and then we'll do the breakout rooms. It's uh, less of a question than a comment. I just want to say that one of the things that helps uh, foster a culture change is when people share examples, and you shared a lot of really great examples today, Shiv. Um, what I think would be helpful is as people do this is to share their own examples to kind of remind folks that this is continuing to happen on an ongoing basis. Yeah, great, great point, Rishi. Thanks for that. And we do the Fridays, so please keep sharing there. But we'd love to hear from you when you do these things and brag about yourselves, brag about what you've seen. If someone, if Vince and Tanner are emailing Frame.io and Tanner does something above and beyond for the Frame.io person, Vince, like brag about that. Um, just because we want to start, again, fostering this culture of treating everyone like a person and caring about them as opposed to treating anyone um, like an instrument to get what we want done. Because if we treat them like a person, we're living our values and whether or not they reciprocate, we'll, 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 we'll be able to go to sleep at night. So, all right, thanks for listening.